everybody, it's Ocelot, and welcome to my full game guide to Eleanor's Pole Blade. On screen, you'll see the stats I ended up with after completing the playthrough. If you'd like to level cap at RL150, just add 6 points to Vigor. Next, let's go over the equipment. We have a plus 10 Eleanor's Pole Blade, plus 10 Dragon Communion Seal, plus 25 Godskin Peeler with Seppuku Blood Affinity, White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Lionel's Greaves and Gauntlets, Ritual Sword Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, and a Thorny Tear and Faith Tear in our Physic. Other talis talismans we have are the Lightning Scorpion Charm, Fire Scorpion Charm, Flock Canvas Talisman, and the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. For buffs, I used Golden Vow, Howlish Abriri. This is a full step-by-step -step guide, and if you'd like to end up with the same stats I did, go ahead and click on the top right of your screen for my setup guide. Choose the Prophet as your starting class, and the Golden Seed as your keepsake. It's all in the link at the top right of your screen. Let's go ahead and get into the guide. So we're going to pick up at the end of the setup guide. You just finished either cheesing the Knight's Cavalry or killing Grail for the runes. Let's go ahead and use those to level up. You're going to want to have 17 strength, 22 dexterity, and 19 arcane minimum to wield the weapons we're going to be using. Next, you're going to want 14 vigor and 10 endurance. If you chose a different starting class, the important thing will be the strength, dexterity, and arcane stats. Now from the setup, let's go ahead and put the Golden Vow Ash of War onto a dagger. Next, let's go ahead and warp over to the Lenny's Rise Site of Grace. We're going to want to go into Lenny's Rise and get the Memory Stone. Let's go to the Castlemorn Rampart side of Grace. We're going to go into another rise and do a quick puzzle so we can get another memory stone. Our next stop is going to be in Kaled. We're going to Fort Gale, which is just south of the Fort Gale north side of Grace. We're going to pick up Flame Grant Me Strength. This grants 20% damage to our physical attacks and 20% damage to fire attacks. Next, we're going to Liernia. We're going to start Raya's quest. We're also going to be picking up a couple other things, namely the Dexterity tier. So let's go ahead and warp to the Lashgar Ruin site of Grace, head northwest, and follow me on screen. Follow me if you've any the Dexterity tier is going to be directly west from Raya. Directly north is going to be Blackguard, where you can either kill him for her necklace, or you can purchase it from him. I chose to purchase it from him. After acquiring the necklace, go back to Raya, give it to her. She in turn will give you the invitation to Volcano Manor. Next, let's warp to Ag Hill Lake south side of Grace in Limgrave. We're going to head west and kill Bloody Hunter Yura. This will prematurely end his quest line. You can complete it, or I did the quicker route and just killed him. You're going to want to mix in the Dexterity tier and the Strength tier into your Physic. Memorize Spell, Flame Grant Me Strength. You're going to want to put on Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, drink your Physic, and you can kill Yura with your plus zero weapon. If you started as a Prophet like I did, that'll be the Spear.
Yuro will drop the Nagakiba, which I actually have an OP guide on my channel if you want to check it out. However, for this guide, let's go ahead and go to the old Altus tunnel. We're going after our weapon, the Eleonora's pole blade. If you don't have the old Altus tunnel side of grace, you can use any side of grace that you have in Altus plateau to get to the church. So if you do have the old Altus tunnel side of grace, I'll show you the route that I took to get to the church. There's a spirit spring that you'll want to take that's just southeast of it. For Eleonora, you can level up your weapon and use your smithing stones from the setup. Or you can just get her to kill herself. This is what I tried to do. However, I dodge rolled and I actually was able to get away from her. If you stand right here, she will kill you or you can even just jump off. And she'll jump off right after you. She did her weapon skill and just jumped off herself. But she'll die and you get our main weapon of the run. Eleanor's pole blade. Now you can go to the round table and level up the weapon. Or you can do what I did and go to smithing master EG. If you follow me on screen, I'll show you the exact route on how to get there. You're going to warp to the south Raya Lucaria gate side of grace. Jump off the bridge, head east to a teleporter. You're going to take that teleporter and that will warp you to the northwest section of Liernia. From there, you're just going to head north and you'll get to Smithing Master EG. So we're going to be leveling our weapon up to plus 6, which if you followed my setup guide, you'll have Sombers 1 through 6 and Smithing Stones 1 through 5 to level up our next Smithing Weapon to plus 15. After leveling up our weapon, we're going to go to South Liernia and warp to the Liernia Lakeshore side of Grace. We're going to head southeast of that into a cave. We're going to be picking up the Winged Sword Insignia. This is going to boost our damage on successive attacks. So just run to the end of the cave. It's a relatively small cave. You're going to want to boost up before you get into the fight. Drink your Physic, which still has the Dexterity tier and Strength tier. Put on Golden Bow, Flame Grant me Strength, and send it. Next, we're going to be heading to Weeping Peninsula. If you have it, go to the Church of Pilgrimage side of Grace. We're going to head southeast from there. We're going to pick up the Faith tier. Also, we're going to fight the Minor Erd Tree there for the Bubble tier for protection. Since we didn't have enough levels to put a healthy amount of points into Vigor, we're going to fight that Erd Tree so we have some protection for the early game. So until we get a healthy amount of vigor, we're going to be using the dexterity tier and the bubble tier in our physic. Next, we're going to be going after the fire tier. So let's head to Kaled, northwest section. If you have it, 
go to the rear gale tunnel entrance site of Grace. If you don't, you can take the Third Church America side of Grace and head north and follow the series of Spirit Springs. If you follow me on screen, I'll show you the route from the rear gale tunnel entrance. So before we go into the fight with the minor earth tree, let's go ahead and do the physics swap that I was telling you about. We'll do the dexterity tier and the bubble tier. Next, we're going to be heading back to Altis Plateau. So go ahead and grab the Altis Plateau site of Grace and head northwest. We're going to be going to fight Gilica. I swapped out the bubble tier for the fire tier. So in my physic, I'll have the fire tier and the dexterity tier. However, if you want the protection, I recommend using the fire tier and the bubble tier. Next, we're going to be heading to Volcano Manor. So follow me on screen and you can check right outside of the ruins to see if Raya's here. If she is here, talk to her to go to Volcano Manor. If she's I've not here, she'll be near the Altis Plateau side of Grace, man. which is near the lift. Give me. I will Before going through Volcano Manor, let's go ahead and level up. We'll put three points into Vigor. Make sure to pop golden runes from the setup to complete the three levels. After you level up, talk to Tannis for the drawing room key. When you go down the hallway, you're going to want to go to the left first. It's going to be the second door on the left. You're going to want to pick up the Volcano Manor contract. We're going to be doing that side quest to pick up the armor. Afterwards, go across the hallway and through the door. Go all the way through to the prison church. We're going to be picking up Smithing Stone 6s and also Somber Stone 5 and 6. Those are going to be used to level up the seal we'll be picking up later on. So I'll go ahead and show my full route so you don't miss any of the Smithing Stones or any of the Somber Stones. Now right here I'll slow it down. 
You can fight this enemy that's on the stairs, or you can do what I do and throw a kukri at the boxes that are at the bottom of the stairs. This will cause the enemy to investigate, and you can crouch right behind them and walk on by. So after bringing the bridge down, let's go ahead and put Volcano Manor on pause and warp to the stranded graveyard site of Grace in Limgrave. We're going to be going after the Dragon Communion Seal, which is going to be our main seal for this run. If you don't have the two Stone Sword keys to get through this fog wall, you can buy two at the Round Table Hold from the Twin Maiden Husks. After acquiring the Dragon Communion Seal, go ahead and equip it. We have the Faith tier, so we will be putting that in. First, let's upgrade our seal to plus 6 at Smithing Master EG. Then, we're going after the Golden Vow Incantation, which we'll be able to cast with the Faith tier. So let's head back to Altis Plateau. To the old Altus Tunnel site of Grace. We're going to be taking Spirit Springs to head into Mount Gelmir. We'll be going after the Golden Vow Incantation. There's another route that I showed you you can take if you don't have the old Altus Tunnel site of Grace. There's going to be an invader which you don't have to take down. I did take the invader down. You shouldn't have any problems taking her down, especially if you kept the bubble tier in your physic. The Golden Vow Incantation versus the Ash of War lasts longer, busts your damage more, and gives you better damage negation. So after grabbing this, let's go ahead and head to the Bridge of Iniquity Site of Grace. We're going to head east towards the Windmill Village. We're going after the other weapon we're going to be using on the run, the Godskin Peeler. Let's rest at this side of grace. You're going to want to equip Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Catch Flame is optional. In the Physic, you want the Faith tier with the Fire tier. If you want more protection, you can have the Faith tier with the Bubble tier. So before engaging the Apostle, let's go ahead and craft Sleep Pots. I crafted five, that's the maximum I have as far as containers go. You want to make sure you have them equipped. Don't put on any of your buffs until after you have slept the Godskin Apostle. So in this fight against the Apostle, I'm going to show you the safe way of doing it. I do get a stance break on him, however I don't go for the critical. I go for the sleep right away because he still has about half health 
If you feel confident, you can go for the critical after getting it. Down goes the Apostle and you have the second weapon of the run, the Godskin Peeler. In Blood Affinity, this weapon at max plus 25 level gets a B scaling in Dexterity and a D scaling in Arcane. Let's go ahead and head to Smithing Master EG. With the sixes we picked up and with the Smithing Stones from the setup, you can upgrade it up to plus 16 for now. Let's head to the Fort Height site of Grace. We're going to go into Fort Height and kill the knight that's at the top before the half of the medallion for the lift. We're interested in Bloody Slash. Mainly, we want to put a blood affinity on our Godskin Peeler. So let's warp to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace. Go into the Ash of War menu at the site of Grace and put on Bloody Slash. You're going to want to put it in blood affinity. Next, we're going to be picking up a piece of armor. So if you follow me on screen, we're going to go towards the mark that I made. We're going to be picking up the raptor's black feathers. As you see, I didn't mark it correctly, but it is in that general area. It's the sage's cave that we're going to go into. You can just run through it. I did die once running through it, however. If you follow me on screen, you can slow it down if you have to. There's a chest that's going to have the raptor's black feathers, so you don't have to fight any of the enemies in here. You can go straight for the chest if you'd like. And here we are at the chest that has the raptor's black feathers. This gives us 10% damage to jump attacks. So we're going to be doing jump attacks with our power stance twin blades. Our next stop is going to be at Fort Lathe. It's also in Mount Gelmir. We're going to be going after the fire scorpion charm. So go ahead and warp to the Erd Tree Hill gazing site of Grace and follow the route that I just pointed out. There's an enemy in here, a fire prelate. You can kill him if you'd like, or you can run past him. You should be OP enough to go after him, so just go ahead and kill him. Once you kill him, go through the building. At the very top, outside of the wall, you're going to be getting another talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm. This boosts our fire damage by 12%, however we take an extra 10% in physical damage. Next, we're going back to Limgrave. We're going to be getting better armor from that contract we picked up from Volcano Manor. So warp to the War Master Shack site of Grace and head north. Until we level up endurance more, you're just going to be able to equip the greaves. So equip the greaves, and next we're going to be heading back to Volcano Manor. So let's go to the Prison Town Church site of Grace. 
make sure that you craft all the sleep pots that you can hold. When you walk through the boss fog, you're going to want to put the noble to sleep and then put on your buffs. God skin noble down. Let's go ahead and use his runes to put four points into vigor. So go ahead and follow the route I take on screen. We're going to be going after the somber seven that's in here. With this and the eight and nine that are in Dragon Barrel, we'll be able to level up Eleanor's pole blade to plus nine, which is one level away from max before fighting any remembrance bosses. Now after dropping all the way down but before going after Somber 7, I recommend taking this route that I'm using to open up these doors just in case you die by either the Albanarix or the Virgin Abductor that's gatekeeping the Somber 7. So next, we're going to warp to the Fort Ferrith side of Grace. I'm going to mark key points of interest. On the first mark, there's going to be two smithing sevens that we'll be picking up and also a smithing eight. On my second mark will be the somber eight. And on my third mark, that's going to be the somber nine. I'll show you the full route I take, so just follow me on screen. So let's warp to Smithing Master EG to level up Eleanor's Pole Blade to plus 9. Then we're going to warp to the Celia Crystal Tunnel side of Grace. We're going to be fighting the boss that's at the end of this tunnel, the Falling Star Beast. If you're not sure if you can take it on, as usual, keep the Faith tier in your Physic, but use the Bubble tier instead of the Fire tier or the Dex tier. Defeating this boss will reward us with 5 smithing stone 7s, however we are still missing smithing stone 6s, so let's fight another falling star beast. Let's go into Altis Plateau, you can take the Altis Highway Junction side of Grace, the Altis Plateau side of Grace, or if you have it like I do, the Outer Wall Phantom Tree side of Grace. 
Since this is a field boss, you can use Torrent if you're having trouble with him, even with the bubble tier. You get five smithing stone sixes from the falling star beast you can level up your god skin peeler to plus 17 i didn't do this just yet we're going to fight margit next after the fight with margit we'll level up our god skin peeler also right now would be a good time to mention since we are power stancing let's swap out the fire tier for the dexterity tier so next let's go after margit as usual, our buffing process will be our Physic first, Golden Bow, Flame Grant and Strength last. Down goes Margaret with little effort. So let's go to Smithing Master Eiji, level up our God Skin Peeler to plus 17. Go back to Stormvale Castle. We're gonna level up, put one point into Endurance, and let's go after Godric. I'm showing you this route because I'm picking up two cracked pots. Also, after grabbing this next site of Grace, I'm going to head south. You can talk to Nefeli Lu. If you talk to her before you fight with Godric, you can use her to be summoned. Her summon sign will appear right outside of the boss fog wall. I'll show you after I talk to her. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice of master. But, well, who do we have? Tarnished, I, I am the f I'm here by the how Otis Graft is tainted. The if I ask you, the winds run. I'm certain. I'll pass fellow Tarnished down whatever road takes us to the throne of... So here's Nefeli's summon sign if you choose to use her for the fight with Godric. As usual, the flask, golden bow, flame grant me strength, and send it. So with Godric down, let's go ahead and level up. We're going to put three points into Vigor. 
So we're going to backtrack back into the castle and pick up another talisman. I'm going to mark it on the map. If you have it, go to the lift side chamber side of Grace. Go south. I'll show you the route on screen and just follow my lead. Claw Talisman gives us a 15% damage boost to our jump attacks. This stacks with our armor, the Raptor's Black Feathers. We're going to start Vari's quest soon, so go ahead and warp to the Round Table site of Grace. We're going to talk to Enya. Afterwards, we're going back to Lyernia to talk to Vari. The closest side of grace I have is a boil prawn shack. If you have one closer, go ahead and use that. We'll be heading to the Rose Church. Exhaust Vare's dialogue until he gives you festering bloody fingers. You can use these in online invasions, or you can do what I do and go to Altis Plateau and use it to invade an NPC there. So warp to the Bridge of Iniquity side of Grace, head east, and invade the NPC. Warp back to Vari, he'll give you Lord of Blood's favor, which you need to bloody. Warp to the Bridge of Sacrifice, Site of Grace. I'll mark an NPC that we can use for this purpose. Now you have a Lord of Blood's favor that's bloodied. Warp back to Vare, talk to him, and he'll give you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. We're going to use that to warp early to Mogwin Palace. So we're here for a few things. We're here for a somber 10 to max out Eleanor's pole blade. We're here for smithing 7s and smithing 8s. Also the white mask. I'll also show you the bird farm. I don't use it, but if you'd like to use it, I'll show you how to accomplish it. Dying a few times and picking up the Somber 10, just east, if you drop down there's going to be a Golden Seed which you can pick up, go ahead and pick it up. So go ahead and warp to the first step side of Grace, we're going to go to this merchant that I mark on the map, we're going to be picking up a bow. You're going to need this bow if you're interested in doing the bird farm.
So for the bird farm, all you have to do is equip a bow, shoot the bird across the way, wait for him to fall off the ledge, rest at the side of grace to respawn him, rinse and repeat. If you have the gold scarab, that'll boost your rune acquisition. If you also put on a gold pickle foul foot, that will boost it even further. Now that you've seen the bird farm, go ahead and follow my route on screen. We're going to be going after the white mask, and you need to be invaded by this specific invader that I'm going towards. So the white mask gives a 10% boost to damage when blood loss occurs, whether it be against an enemy or on you. Go ahead and equip it. You're going to go into heavy load, but we have enough golden runes that we've picked up throughout this area that we'll be able to put levels into our character. So go ahead and equip it. We're going to warp to Fort Ferris, and we're going to level up. We'll be putting three points into endurance. After you level up, we're going to head northeast. We're going to be fighting the Putrid Avatar and Grail. Equip a Golden Pickle Foul Foot to your quick slot. So as soon as this enemy dies, you want to consume that Gold Pickle Foul Foot. You want to be able to use that same Gold Pickle Foul Foot to kill Grail. This enemy is relatively easy. Just watch for that jump attack because it spews out Scarlet Rock. It leaves an area of effect that damages you. Also, it builds up Scarlet Rot on you if it gets on you. So as soon as the enemy goes down, consume the gold pickle foul foot and jump on torrent and head northeast. We're going to be going after Grail that's on the bridge. Grail's like any other dragon. He'll breathe fire at you if you're far away. He does a jump attack that will slam down on you. He does a fire attack over you and he'll do a fire attack if you're near you, if you are near him. Down goes Grail. If you are lucky enough, you are able to kill him with the Gold Pickle Foul Foot still active. Go ahead and level up. We're going to be putting 5 points into Vigor, 4 points into Endurance, and 2 points into Arcane. Whether or not the Gold Pickle Foul Foot was active, if you don't have enough runes, make sure that you do the Endurance first, Vigor next, and Arcane last. Next, we're going to be going after Radon. So follow me on screen and I'll show you the skip 
where you don't have to go all the way to Red Main Castle. There's also a sacred tier here, so let's go ahead and use that at the side of Grace. If you can't do this skip, don't worry about it. It's just a shortcut. You All you have to do is jump when you're at the edge, and as soon as the camera pans right over you, double jump again, and you need to fall all the way down, and the Stake America needs to appear underneath your stamina bar. If it does, and it asks you to respawn at the side of Grace, you did it correctly. So to skip the arrow phase of Radon, as soon as you go into the teleporter, turn around, jump on Torrent, and run straight towards the camera or away from Radon. As soon as you don't see him and he's not shooting arrows at you, you can turn around and go back towards him. I usually take this time to drink the Physic. I'll put on Golden Bow. Flame grant me strength since it's the shortest lasting buff. I don't put that on until I'm as close to Radon as possible. Radon goes down, consume your other gold pick of Foulfoot if you still have it. You'll get a 91,000 runes. And we're going to use that to level up here. You're going to want to put 2 points into Endurance and 4 points into Arcane. So after you level up, you're going to want to head to the round table and talk to Enya. She'll give you the third talisman pouch. Then we're going to head to carry a manor. But first, we're going to stop at Smithing Master EG to level up Eleanor's pole blade to plus 10. And as soon as we get to carry a manor, you're going to want to go in and turn right. We're going to be picking, picking up a cookbook. It's going to have the recipe for freezing pots. We're going to need that later on in this guide, so let's go ahead and pick it up now. Now here I'm showing you what you should have equipped, and that's the Scale Greaves and Gauntlets, Ritual Sword Talisman, Claw Talisman, and the Winged Sword Insignia. Next up we'll have Loretta. She's really easy, so really not much to say about her. A few jump attacks and she should die. with Loretta down, that's going to be the end of part one. We're going to start Ronnie's quest. After talking to Ronnie, Celevis, and Eiji, you're going to warp to the Fort Height side of Grace oh. and head into Nakron. Again we cross Thanks paths. everybody for the, your I believe support. I pleasing, but Tom, Thanks for the I comments. No Thanks for the encouragement. No if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. See you guys on the next one. Bye.